Okay, let's jump right into it. Alright, so today's discussion, like I mentioned already, is going to mainly be about... Basically, about the discussion, the ongoing discussion that relates to cons comparing consoles to PCs. And I see this a lot. I see this here on YouTube. I see this on other gaming sites like IGN and 4G and a lot of other gaming sites that I visit off and on. One of the main things that people really just love to discuss, especially now with the next gen consoles upon us, is how, how are they going to fare against, you know, PCs. PCs which have really been growing over the past couple of years. And one of the main benchmarks is, you know, PS4. When Sony announced the specifications of PS4, you know, Sony fanboys, they just lost it. They went completely crazy about the Times 86 architecture, the 8 gigabytes of RAM, the 8 core GPU, things of that nature. And, and ever since then, the main discussion has been, well, can it, can it run PC games at the highest settings at 1080p? 60 frames. That's been the, like, the main point of discussion. And they love to, you know, point at games like Battlefield 4, which is going to be multi-platform, releasing on both PCs, next-gen consoles, current-gen consoles, and Watch Dogs as well. Like, how is this going to look compared to the PC version? That's been the main topic of discussion. And personally, I don't understand why these like PC fanboys and console fanboys constantly keep getting in the this very same argument over and over again it really doesn't make that much sense to me mainly because you cannot fairly compare a console to a PC it's just unfair back then it was unfair and even now it is still unfair and the reason why I say that well back then consoles actually did have the upper hand over PCs Looking back at, you know, the fifth generation and that's like, you know, the N64, the PlayStation, PlayStation 1. Back in the fifth generation, consoles had an edge over PCs a little bit because um, development on PC, 3D games, it was not as advanced as how consoles were. A lot of people weren't using their PCs to game yet. It was still mainly like a work ma working machine, a machine that allows you to access the internet and to type up emails and things of that nature. The gaming on PCs really didn't take off too much at that point in time. So developers would really try not put their best on consoles. But nowadays you can definitely tell that there is a pretty noticeable difference between let's say a 360 and PS3 version of a game compared to the PC version of that very same game. Like Crisis 3 for example. Like compare the PS3 version to the PC version of Crisis 3 crisis on highest settings and you will see that you know crisis 3 definitely comes out on top on the pc that's just one example of the many other titles out there that are multi-platform but looking fast forwarding to now you know it's it's different uh development of pc parts have been has expanded greatly and there seems to be like you know new gpus new processors coming out for pcs every couple of weeks that's how it seems and there's always an announcement of this of this new get of this new part and that new part all of which will intensify a pc and enable it to run these newer more demanding games a whole lot more smoothly and that is the main thing that separates consoles from pcs Consoles are closed systems. You cannot upgrade a console. You can maybe, like with a PS3 for example, you can swap out the hard drive or give it more storage. But you cannot, like, say, put more RAM into it. You can't add a new GPU. You can't add a new processor in the same way that you can do that to a PC. So consoles are closed systems. Even though one console may have several revisions that may, you know, put a new cooling system inside, it may change the design, make it more compact, add a new, add some more storage space. That console's core specifications, like its RAM amount, its GPU, its processor, that stays the same until that console is succeeded by a brand new iteration. It completely stays the same. So when developers develop, um, create their games for that system, or systems I should say, they work according to that system's specifications. 
so when after the game is finished and consumers go ahead and buy that game and start to play they don't have to worry about well I wonder if my if the, my console can run this you know that that's a headache they don't have to worry about when it comes down uh, to playing on consoles because consoles are closed systems and they are optimized with the first priority of playing video games and, and that's the main thing that that sets it apart from PCs you know like I said consoles are optimized and by that I mean they have a streamlined operating system and their inner specs are gauged correctly so that they will be able the games will be able to take as much power as possible in order to look and run their absolute best on that system and P PCs are built completely different from that with a PC, you know, you have thousands and upon thousands of PCs out there. They're all made by different people. They're all running different processors, different, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me, different processors. They all have different GPUs. They all have different amounts of RAM. They all have different operating systems. And they're all different ages. So you cannot come um, build a PC game in the same way that you can build a console game. Like I said, when you build a console game, you are building for that specific console. You don't have to worry about it. You make that game according to the console specifications. But with a PC, you have a huge, a huge variety of different machines to develop for. Not every PC owner out there has virtually the same PC. There's always something a little bit different which can mean running a game at high at the highest settings at full speed or it can only run prop at full speed on the lowest settings. So there's a lot of key differences that separates them. So that's basically the, the main headache that PC developers have to go through because PCs are open. It's an open platform and PC owners need to make the who are really really into gaming they need to make the necessary upgrades to their rigs or as much as as much as they can in order to stay on top like the same way you know you can upgrade a car you can put a new engine in a car add a new exhaust system things such as that those key things which can upgrade that car's performance you can do that to a pc but you cannot do that to a console so that's that's why I just don't understand why, you know, the PC fanboys and the console fanboys think it's a good idea to, in order to have this constant back and forth battle between, well, my PC is like, you know, totally powerful, it's more powerful than your, you know, stupid next gen console, like, that's totally weak, and the console fanboys are like, whoa, 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 my console has, you know, like, 8 gigabytes of memory, and, and it has, like, an 8 core GPU, and, you know, like, how, and it's only for, like, 300, um, $400, so, like, how much does your, how much it take for you to upgrade your PC in order to have specs like that and it really, really is, does not make a lot of sense guys trust me it does not it only makes you look really really brainless and no, no offense of course but yeah so mm, lost my train of thought there sorry yeah so I just don't understand because and on top of that, you know, PCs, they have full-scale operating systems. These machines are not only built for running video games, even video game PCs, they, yeah, they're built with those, that extra power in order to run video games, the more demanding video games at high speeds and at the highest settings, of course. But even though they're still PCs, they can still do a lot of other things than play video games. They can still do stuff like access the internet and, um run powerful software like video creation software and music creation software and picture editing software things such as that so these are multi-purpose systems they have an operating system which is built in order to all that power and even when running game they are still running a lot of background processes which eat at the computer's memory so the more memory they have the more power that they have the more smoothly they can run that game Consoles on the other hand, consoles are built with, like I said, the sole purpose of, <clears throat> sorry, the sole purpose of running games. 
so when a console is running a game it like it switches off base almost completely switches off everything else that it does not need at that moment in order to make sure that that game can run smoothly if it's optimized correctly and that's why consoles and PCs cannot be fairly compared because they are built completely differently even like Steam Bot, the Steam OS with the Steam machines the Steam machines are still PCs yes they're running a modified Linux operating system which is built on on Steam which is going to you know basically make it a little bit easier to run games but even so that's still a PC that can still be upgraded and that can still be in you can still install like a Mac operating system or a Windows operating system on top of that in order in order to run different kinds of applications like I mentioned now developers basically have to go through the same headache when it comes down to Apple devices and Android devices and I said that because Apple devices are a little more comparable to consoles Apple devices are, you know, they're basically made under one roof. And they all have similar specifications to each other. Yes, there are different variations of Apple devices, like, you know, there are iPhones, there are iPads, there are iPods. Just as, you know, you have the PlayStation, you have the Xbox consoles, and you have the Nintendo consoles. Yeah, you know, there are different variations. But, these got, it's made with closed specs, and they're a lot closer together. So, when developers are undeveloped for the Apple system on devices they can optimize their applications and optimize their games in order to run smoothly on these devices because the development process is a lot more a more, lot more simpler sorry <clears throat> because these are more closed systems so they're a lot closer together Android is much more like the PC family there are a ton of different devices all running different versions of the operating system they all have different specifications because they're all made by a bunch of different manufacturers you have some android you have android smartphones you have android tablets some are made by um samsung some are made by asus some are made by lenovo just to give an example so there are a lot of different Android devices than there are Apple devices and that's what makes it so much different developing for an Apple device as it would be developing for consoles to an Android device as it would be developing for PCs because Apple devices and consoles they're closed they're compact so developers are able to optimize their games in order to run on those devices properly PCs and Android devices that's different because it's much more fragmented so they have to make according to like basically you know the highest the highest or closest to the highest thing out there and they're just gonna and users are just gonna have to meet that benchmark in order to be able to run these things smoothly so yeah I've so that's my two cents on the whole uh, fiasco between PCs versus consoles personally I find it really I don't it's not really a fair discussion in order to try and, and compare the two because they are built differently even though gaming PCs and consoles are built for the main purpose of playing video games they handle this different they handle that process differently and because of that they cannot be fairly compared because it is just too way too different well, that's my opinion on it so wh what do you guys think do you guys think it's it's fair to compare pcs to consoles do you think that it's, it's a logical discussion to have or do you share a similar thoughts to me go ahead and sound off in the comment section all right i've rambled on enough and now it's time for me to go so once again i thank you guys for joining me today on a yet another extreme projections video and i hope to see you again soon have a great day and keep on gaming See you later.